waste too much of my time. Uh, this is basically me. Uh, let's get this over with. It's my role at the university. Uh, oh, you want me to speak in this one? But I always move around. Uh, but I get the rock star kind of feeling here. Um, we, in one of our courses on embedded programming, we switched and started to use Arduino. It was perfect, it was easy to get started with. Um, the IDE lowered the threshold. When we introduced the Arduino um, or other hardware and show that to people who were new to programming, they've just learned Java, and all of a sudden we show them the command line, we show them s scary tools. We notice that when we introduce them to Arduino, using the IDE, it was perfect, way easier. But it, uh, doing that, we faced some problems. Problem is I usually read here, but I can't do it right now. So I'm gonna show you my back. When we made a bigger project, not the examples you see in the Arduino, it was a couple of hundred, couple of thousand lines long um, program split into many smaller files developed by several students at the same time. Uh, we had a problem. Uh, we, we tried using Git and cut paste and blah, blah, blah. It didn't work. We missed unit testing a lot. Uh, we, we, it's not as if you are recommended to use malloc and calloc in embedded programming. Still, it's good to do some unit testing every now and then to check the logic. Um, and we notice that it's pretty, s it's pretty lame. You're developing this 4,000 line long program, you spent hours, weeks, and all of a sudden the lead doesn't blink anymore. So you have to debug it, sometimes using, well, code review. So we, we had a problem with that. And we also needed to automate the tests. So we realized that we, we, um, we had to write a sort of a faked environment. So basically we took the Arduino API, implemented every function, um, not every, but almost every function, the ones we used at the university, so we could create a program that could run um, by itself with no hardware, and then we added some small standard out, standard in interface to it so we could set, for example, input pin one to one and see what happened in the code. But after a while when we, we've, uh, w when we did that, we realized that we were almost done writing a simulator. So we finished one, we wrote one. And we got some complaints from students that didn't want to write uh, unit tests in C, so we wrote to, uh, wrote a Python extension to it, so they could write the unit tests in Python. And for the fun of it, I added a Java extension because I needed to refresh my almost non-forgotten, almost totally forgotten uh, Java skills. Um, I want to show the classic Hello World example. It doesn't do good because there is no screen here, so I'm going to do it using uh, a Blinkenlicht. So let's see what happens here. I'm afraid of this presentation program. So here is a blinking LED program. Also, there's some reading of one pin to another, but if we focus on these lines here, it basically puts the output uh, on pin 13 to one and takes it down again to zero. So it should blink. If, how many have done these kind of things in front of, in front of a live audience and gotten away with it? Now it blinks, but let's try and whoops, upload this one. I'm going to show uh, 
uh, one of the most used features of the simulator. This is, by the way, the Arduino IDE, which is lovely. It really helps people to get over the first barrier. So I'm, I, I'm not here to bash this IDE in any way. But let's upload it, and let's see when the LED blinks. Problem is that it doesn't blink. And this was something we, excuse me? Oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, no, you weren't, you weren't supposed to see this. <laughs> damn. <laughs> what a disaster. I'm going home. <laughs> Problem is my flight is on Monday. If I only can see my mouse again. Anyhow, <laughs> plot is, I'm going home. A lot of times, <laughs> no, I'll never do that, which I just proved. A lot of times the students forgot to say what kind of pin, pin 13 should be, or whatever pin you you're want to talk with. And if you don't set the output to 13, oh sorry, this pin 13 to an output pin, uh, um, you cannot write to it. So you are, this code is writing to the LED, but nothing happens. So now I'm going to show the simulator and how we develop code. And I'm using my favorite editor. Some of you may recognize it. It's Emacs. It's the only one I know. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so this is basically the same code. Um, it's writing to digital pin 13, uh, first a one and then a zero. Basically, that's all that happens. So uh, uh, that's it. So I'm going to show you how we develop that. This is kind of hard. The only thing I do, I write a couple of, these are all the lines that I need to write as a make file. And, and the, um, I here put the um, board. I want to program for you know, but since the program didn't work, we are programming for something we used to call stub. It's not a stub anymore, but the name is still here. So what we are doing is um, we are basically saying that don't produce code for the actual Arduino, but produce code to be run locally on this one. How am I doing on time? Good, but good depends on how much more I have to say. <laughs> Perfect, thanks. So wh what the program does or what Arduino does for me now is given the uh, C file that you saw in my Emacs buffer, and the small make file, it produces a shared object, basically a dynamic library. And somewhere in the history here, I should have had, I have an installed version here. I find, man, I do type crappy. So I fire up the um, Java, Simulator. It's a big one today on this screen. I open up the newly, freshly compiled shared object. And the what we can see here is this time it's actually uh, not a, a flaw in the, in the simulator. Uh, you're seeing a lot of printouts here. It's warning. You're trying to write. Um, by digital, with a function digital write to pin 13. Let's stop it and look at the rest, which is an input pin. This was great value for, uh, for the students. They All of a sudden, they could get feedback from the simulator saying that, oh, you're writing to pin 13, which is an input pin. So um, s some of them ask me, what do we do now? And yeah. Simple answer was, uh, you need to initialize it as an output pin. And this is what I do here. So I 
Woo. If I recompile it now as a shared library and open it up again. I can choose board here, but let's continue with. All of a sudden, we don't have any warnings. And we can see the uh, pin 13 going berserk. So we can actually test the that, that it is working. Nice, fine. And since we're, uh, if we would have made a similar mistake as before, we would still see some warnings here. Um, we, I just want to show you that we can also d uh, read the input pins. So in the program, if I click input, if, if input 10 goes high, digital uh, output pin 11 should also go high. Um, in a rather slow fashion, it does. It's not due to the simulator, but the code that the simulator, simulator is running. Mm. So let's try and um, a quick this with this code you develop C, uh, with this program you develop C C++ code that you run on the Arduino you build it for Arduino any board you can run it as a standalone program basically a, um, an elf program you run it or the best way, if you want to use the simulator, pr produce a shared object, upload it to the simulator, and run it. This is um, the basic. Uh, th there's a couple of other simulators, but I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to show the uh, Java sort of architecture here. This is the um, Arduino code built as a shared object. It's loaded by Serduino. We have a s uh, simulator API called CSIM. On top of that, we have a, a Java class that wraps all the simulator into a Java interface. And Gerduino, we're not very good at names, uh, is the uh, Java simulator. That's it. We've done that. This, I'm happy that you can see. It's, it would be great to have some people join us to develop um, this program further. We need more implementation of the Arduino API. I think it would be pretty cool to have an Eclipse plugin. Somehow, I don't know how. Uh, make it possible to load Arduino's INO files. Basically, the Arduino files you get uh, with the Arduino is C++, C++ files. But they are called INO. It would be pretty cool if you could load them into this uh, simulator directly. What we've done so far is we, we can take an INO file and translate, um, convert that into a C file, create some make files around it. So we're almost there, but we need some more help. We're running out of time. Uh, it's given the amount of time I have given the three kids and all everything else I do, we shouldn't have an active project. But it's listed on one of the sites, Olo.net, that it's very active. So it is active, I think. Uh, we are building it every night using this tool, uh, VMM, which is going to be, they are here. They are going to present something tomorrow. Uh, why the name? C, as in the programming language C. And one of my favorite books was called Deep Sea Secrets, so I thought the joke was so funny. Uh, so I wanted uh, to have C. Uh, well, you get the joke. Uh, I, I think, it, uh, do we have any Swedes here? Yeah. OK, so <laughs> uh, I'm from Gothenburg, and Gothenburg are known and hated by the rest of Sweden for their crappy jokes, and we always want to play around with stupid names. And this is the result. So don't kill me. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. Questions? Nothing. OK. Yeah. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, can you simulate uh, analog conditions like uh, analog voltages and, for instance, pin uh, button bounds and things like that? Uh, what was it? P pin button? Uh, sorry? Uh, I, I couldn't. Uh, I, can you say it again? I mean, can you simulate uh, analog inputs? Yeah. Yes. And uh, analog, uh, not analog out because it's PVM, but yeah. Yeah. And uh, th things like uh, button bounds, for instance, that would be useful to try. Ah, uh, I don't know. Perhaps it's perhaps it is possible. I don't know. Hmm. Um, the serial interface, for example, is implemented, and. Um, that is not answering uh, your question. So uh, le let's talk afterwards. I, I, I just want to say a, a stupid mistake I did because I implemented the HID, the uh, human interface uh, thing. So you could, I have a Leonardo which was stolen the other day. And you can now simulate the mouse and keyboard stuff. But it turned out that when I did that using the simulator, it grabbed uh, my mouse. So I couldn't stop the simulator anymore and it kept running forever.